and welcome to another exciting episode. Okay, it's just another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Will we learn something today in this video? Absolutely. I learn something just about every time I mess around with one of these jokers. So what I have here is an Evan Root. Um, I had no idea what it is. It's a long shaft because I can tell by how close the shaft is to the floor. It is electric start because I can tell that this is a some kind of wiring that goes onto a battery. And it has a another wire with a rum, rum, rum key switch. Other than that, it's kind of like the other 25 horse I worked on recently. I don't remember where I got it. I don't remember where it came from or what the situation was when I picked it up. I just know that it's here in my shop and mostly complete. And that's where we'll start on this one. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is identify what this is. And I'm gonna show you, normally there's a tag over here or over here, down where it mounts onto the transom. That's gone off of this one. I'm gonna show you another way to identify Johnson and Evan Roots. Um, when you don't have that information. And it's under the hood. And it's in a spot where you might not suspect it being. We'll just set this over here, this little tiny hood on top of the 50 horse. Uh, my guess is it's not a 50 because that hood is bigger and that is a 50. This is a 25. The hoods are close in size for sure. So let me bring you in here real close with a flashlight and I'm gonna show you where to look for this information. Now, we're here on the side of the motor that's got the fuel pump on it right there. And I got the bright light here just to help you see. And I'm trying to get back here. See, there's a, there it is right there. A little silver circle there. Looks like a little frost plug is what it looks like. And that's exactly what it is, a casting plug of some sort but it also has a number on it. And this one says 35S53R. And then below it is like a serial number, an E0005-479. So 358S, no, 35S, nope. I'm trying to get Yeah, I'm calling it 35S53R. So we'll take that information. Now these folks better start sending me something because I refer a lot of people to this company. So we're gonna go on the Google and we're gonna do a, come on. Whoop. I got a little shortcut here to marineengine.com. And now it's saying, do you wanna look up Everroods, Hondas? So Evan Rude outboard, shot by model number. So I'm gonna put this model number in there and see if anything comes up. Now I gotta go back over here and look. So we'll type in 35S. Maybe that is an eight. Oh, 35.8. A 358 53R 358 53R and you click on that there it is it shows us that we have a so that's how we can identify this this outboard it's a 78 Evan Rude 35 horsepower and right there you can quickly go from there down below to look at carb kits, charge coil, fuel pump, spark plugs. That's how simple it is, folks. It's not rocket science by any, it's outboard science. That's right. Excuse me for losing my cool for a second. Outboard science. Yeah. So say I wanted to look for a carb kit. I can punch that right there 
Here it's going to take me to all the different carb kits they have available for it, which is really cool. You know, anywhere from a, a Sierra brand for $21.25 all the way to there's an Evan Rude Johnson one for $29.95. So, you know, they're not eBay or not uh, Amazon prices, but they are they are good prices. They're not bad for Evan Rude and Johnsons. So we go back and let's pick something else, which is really kind of cool to see. So let's go look at a crankshaft and piston. We can click on that and it'll take us to the exploded view. That's what's beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. If you can't, I'm sorry, go look at the website yourself on your own outboard, but it's the exploded view of the connecting rod, the wrist pin, the bearings, the journal bearings, the rod end caps, the crank bearings, you know, everything. And then, you, like if I'm gonna look up number, let's see, number eight, which is a connecting rod, journal bearing, number eight. So go down to number eight here, there's two, we're getting closer. And it'll tell you, there we go, eight. Needle rod set required, one per assembly. And uh, they're got two in stock, you can get them. So it'll tell you if it's in stock or not in stock. You know, if it's not in stock and they don't have it available, sometimes that's a good time to take that part number you find there, go on to eBay and do a search on eBay. So hopefully um, people will watch this video and go, where do you get your parts? That question will stop, which I don't mind answering it, but that's how I do it. That's why I thought it was important to show you on this one. This is a perfect example. Now I know it's a 35 horse, which is, I'm excited about that because it's bigger than I thought because I thought it was just a 20 or 25. But yeah, it's a 35 horse and it's a long shaft. And let's take a little walk around on this thing and see what we got. Now let's take a quick walk around this thing and look at it, you know, let's look under the hood and see what we got here. And I'm gonna show you some of the things I'm looking for when I'm looking one of these things over. Now, I don't see a lot of grease and oil and stuff underneath here which could indicate an upper seal leakage. I don't see a lot of fuel leaks. I see a lot of fairly new wiring here and some old wiring here. Uh, all these terminals and everything look like they're in really good shape. Don't see a lot of cracking or any cracking on any of the wiring. Don't see any evidence of mice chewing through anything. I do see a very old coil and a much newer style coil. A newer wire and an older coil with an older wire a big giant blue line coming through here coming and that's your the pee hole tubing there got a neat little junction block here that looks really new uh, wiring management that has been done pretty well other than it doesn't have any wrap around any of these wires so I can I can fix that it's got a 30 amp fuse right here that is not blown. That's good. Got your starter relay here, your starter. Um, don't know if it's original or not. Seems to have a lot of road rash on it here for some reason or another. Somebody did something. Air box is still intact. Very rarely do I find one of these old ones that the air box is even still on it. This has got an electric Well, it looks like an electric choke. Well, no, that's the that's the manual choke. And this is adjusted as such. So when I see this move, when I pull this out, this goes down a little bit. This pulls this forward. This is your butterfly for your throttle. Let's see, does it shift into gear? Feels like we got some compression in gear. Woo! Wow! Here's the wide open throttle. Seems to be working. And this is the same kind of setup as the 25 horse had, where you get some manual riding on the front. There's a little cam on the front here. And then once it hits this, rod that goes straight to the butterfly and then laser flat just dumping fuel like it's its job 
The power pack almost, I would say, looks original. Well, you can see where it's actually just rubbed the hood for many, many years. I meant to look under that hood. Does that hood have a bunch of rotted insulation in it like that 25 horse did? Well, it's got some of it left. Not nearly as crumbly of a fashion, but we'll take the rest of that out. Stink. All right. But overall, the hood, the blue of the hood and the blue of this, this thing's actually, paint-wise, is in really good shape. You know, you can tell it hasn't sat in the water a whole lot. It's just, even that skag on the bottom, God, I gotta take a look at that. Hold up. This one, you gotta flip this forward. Boink. And then you can lift this right on up. Oh, long shift's a little heavier. And she sit up just like that. Do we know what size prop this has on it? No writing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Looks like a 10 inch prop, 15 pitch. Well, this thing can handle a much bigger prop. That's funny. This is the exact same size prop I'm getting ready to try on the 25 horse. Makes me wonder if the 25 horse can pull it. I also have a 13 pitch prop to try on the 25 horse. I may dig out my 11 pitch. I just talked to a buddy of mine. He has a 25 horse. I think it's a Johnson. Maybe it's an Evan Rude. Don't remember. We worked on it here. And he just sent me over. The, he's got a 9 inch diameter by 10 pitch. So I might just take me a 10 pitch prop with me too. Just in case that 15 pitch may be a little much for it. I don't know. I don't know. Well, first things... Get back over here, Michael. First things first, we're going to go ahead and get the old. This one isn't very dirty, but I still need to clean it up. It's still got, like right up in here, still got some corrosion and stuff. Some, it's not bad. I mean, this thing is really, really in decent shape. The only ones I've seen that are really bad are the ones that people have left fall over on the ground and let mud and rain and everything splash all over the inside of it without a cover on it or the mice got into and just made a home i actually had one of them it was a 1969 20 horse that was on the sea nymph i had i had a 1969 sea nymph boat and i had it with a 1969 i it, the guy that bought it don't live far from me i see it when i drive it by all the time he still keeps the cover on it that i sold with it proud of him for doing that and uh, but that thing had when I pulled the cover off of that one, the shape of the cover was still there. There was so much mice nesting going on in there that they had put so much bedding in there, it was the shape of the cover. I ain't kidding you. I cleaned it up before I realized I should have recorded that. I missed an opportunity. But uh, I vacuumed it all out. Didn't have, I don't remember that one having a lot of wires chewed up on it. Got it running. Used that thing several times as is. And then, uh, cause that was the sea nymph was gonna be my test boat, but it was just, it was a little 14 foot V bottom, a little too shakety shakety. Wasn't gonna put any big motors on it. Anything Bass 20, I wouldn't have felt comfortable with. So that's why I got the good enough John boat. So I could put up to, it says on the tag, 40 horse. I'm not gonna lie. I got a couple of fifties that are gonna go on it for testing. It's uh, might be a little ridiculous, but you know, we'll be careful. Sure, why not? All right, let's clean this engine up, put a little degreaser on it, rinse her down, and uh, then we're gonna check what? What are we gonna check first? Crickets. Compression. We always check compression. Because if you got compression, quite literally the rest of it's not that expensive in comparison you can have if you got good compression the rest of it can be brought back around relatively cost effectively carburetor kits aren't bad fuel pumps aren't bad coil packs power packs for these things aren't that bad i mean quite frankly i think you could if i had to throw a number out there i get a carb kit a fuel pump you can get a fuel pump kit for these even uh coils spark plugs in a power pack, you'd spend less than $200. And then you got 
most of the peripherals on this engine covered and uh black brand new again so think about that if you picked up one of these for two three hundred bucks five hundred bucks put another 200 in it put another brand new prop on it even change the gear oil maybe even do the seals on the bottom end put a new water pump in it for less than a grand you're gonna have something in your possession that will last you many 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 years to come so you know when you put it in the grand scheme of things this is what's going to get you around the lake this is what's going to make or break your fishing day on a boat so it's worth putting in the effort and a little bit of the money all right let's clean this thing up now some of you might ask what's my technique for going around and cleaning these engines up like i did on that 25 horse to get them looking nice inside you know lift that grease and get it out of there well what i've been using is this aerosol can super clean seems to work pretty good uh it doesn't seem to be too harsh uh because usually the buildup you have on these engines isn't that bad but this can handle it pretty well uh this actually cuts through quite a bit of grease but i'll hose it down i'll shake this up cover it in foam and then i go after it i got toothbrushes you can buy a pack of toothbrushes like six or eight toothbrushes for a dollar and i use those toothbrushes to go in there and just kind of massage it around a little bit then i've got my little container of water you can use this if you don't have a spigot near where you're at this here will you know you can pump it up it's one of those uh chapin chapin or chapin sprayers and then matter of fact this is what i just bought today was some uh more toothbrushes because I, I go through a couple of them then i rinse it off then i spray it down with some simple green and do it one more time rinse that off because uh, it takes a little bit to rinse off that this stuff here a simple green helps cut through everything then it gets it all you know neutralized more or less and safer for you yeah we'll uh start off this way then i'll switch you to time lapse and we'll look at the before and after we'll walk around on this there we go and don't worry about the electrical spray it all now there's probably <coughs> a few of you that said what why are you i'm gonna turn my fan on move some air around here and you see some of the brown coming up through the foam i don't know that just makes me that makes me happy it means it's just lifting the dirt and this electrical that i'm going to get all wet in here now keep in mind i'm not putting any power to any of these electronics because it'll be a day or two probably before i get back to this one after i clean it and everything will be dry because i've got a fan out here moving air around she'll be she'll be really dry then we'll pull the plugs we'll spray some stuff down the cylinders we'll check compression this time i don't have to pull it that feels good we'll go from there I'm not worried about the pan or anything under here. That's actually pretty clean on this one. Well, let's take one more quick look around. I'd say we're good enough to do some surgery now let's get after it let's get that compression checked next now that she's clean and dry let's just take a look and see what kind of spark plug action we got going on here top cylinder actually burning pretty clean they got some uh BR7HS's in this thing, NGK's. How's the bottom cylinder look? Boy, they're both burning 
pretty much identical. It looks actually really good. Not unhappy with that at all. Well, before I roll it over too much, I'm going to go ahead and tip this thing up a little bit. Okay, a lot. Go ahead and flip that up. Pick this thing back up like this. Now, what I like to do is, you know, not run these things around dry. So I got some Marble Mystery Oil and a little squirt bottle here. We're just going to give a nice healthy shot down each cylinder. Then we're going to massage it. I'm going to roll it over slow and easy. I don't want it to shoot all out of the top yet. Just going to give it a chance to work around them rings. Sounds pretty good. Once I do that, we'll go ahead and set it back down. At least that way I know it's not dry. We get some rags to catch the oil. Because, well, we just cleaned this up. We don't want to make a big old mess. Thing come back out it all stayed in there which that's okay we're gonna leave that rag down the bottom for just in you know just in case now I bought me a little spark checker you know that I can just clamp onto here somewhere maybe Get a good groundage going. Like this little wire right here. Just gonna check for some spark. Which there is none. But remember this one has a key switch. Let's turn the key to the that is in the on position. Oh yeah. Zippity doo dah. Well, if you touch that with your bare hand, it'll send you to the moon. We got a spark on the upper cylinder. That's good. Oh yeah, I like this little spark checker. We we'll get you in here close, let you see it. Hopefully the camera picks it up. Don't know if it will. Let's watch right here. It's got a powerful spark. That's a good thing. So the lower, even though it's this old nasty coil down here, older one, with a little bit of a, you know, needs a little bit of cleaning. I'm probably gonna pull it off, clean up all the surfaces. So I got good contact, even though it's already sparking. Still don't hurt for it to be a little bit better. Let's go ahead and check compression on this joker. I'm not so sure my drill is going to be able to whip this over just yet, but we'll see. Let's see what happens. Whoa. It did it. She's at 110. So that's 90, 100, 110. Yeah, we're at 110. That's good news. That's good news. Come on, number two, bottom cylinder. Show me some love. Show me some love.
All right, let me catch up a little bit here. Somebody didn't charge his receiver, you know, mic receiver battery all the way up, so it died partway through the videoing of the last segment. So I didn't realize that. We got a few things done, so I'm going to catch up where we're at, and we're going to see if this thing will fire up here in just a minute. Right now we're putting spark plugs back in, and I'm putting in, it had some uh, NGK B are seven HS tens in it, which I'm gonna hang on to. They're still in good shape. Don't know if they're the right heat range. I was looking for a cross-reference chart for a, cause I'm running a, what it says you're supposed to run in this is a, it's an 828M or a QL 77 JC4 champion. So I like to run the, what they recommend for plugs. Call me crazy. We're gonna put a little silicone or I shouldn't say silicone, I mistakenly said that before. Uh, some lithium, or not, not even lithium, dielectric grease, my gosh. Guess I haven't quite woke up yet this morning. But I like to put that in the boots. Makes them easy on. You can feel the snap better versus all the drag. Even though I'm aware that the carburetor needs, or not the car, carburetor could need rebuilding. We haven't, we're not going to rebuild it. We're going to run fuel through it first as is. Um, now we're going to get down here. Well, let me talk about what's up going on in the upper end here. I took the carburetor air box off. And it's only, <clears throat> it's only three screws here that hold it on. Three long screws. And this little bolt on the side here. Don't forget that bolt on the side. You'll think something's holding you up and that'll be it. And I put three little socket head, shorter, you know, I think they're 1024 socket head cap screws in here to hold this plate on, which is your choke plate. So we got, we got our choke plate you know, firmed up so I can actually watch things under here. I can watch the you know, throttle and all that stuff move. So when I'm, when I'm running this thing, I keep an eyeball on a couple of things. That's all. That's the only reason for that. But uh, everything else looks pretty good and pretty clean. I haven't cleaned up the connections yet. We can get my towel out of here. That was catching all the JB or JB Wells. Um, Marble Mystery Oil that I put in the cylinders that oozed out. But yeah, we're ready to... Ready to put some gear oil in it. Now, we did drain it last night, and turns out no water, which is good, in the gear in the gearbox. So we're gonna pump it back full of some 75W90 AMS oil gear, you know, outboard gear oil, and we'll be ready to uh, fire this thing up. As you know, we fill it from the bottom, wait for it to come out here. And I only had about, what was that at? Eight ounces in there before I started here. But I got a new new jug here. That's it for that one. <laughs> I was literally only like three pumps away from that being full from that other quart. That was close. So. Put the upper plug back in now that we got Good old clean gear oil coming out the top. I don't know what you guys do with your leftover quart, but I like to go ahead and dump whatever's left over into my next quart. Just to preserve as much as I can because this stuff's not cheap. Let's hook some power up. Hopefully red's still positive. We got our key switch here. Let's see if she bumps. Nothing. Maybe that's why they somebody put it aside. The starter went out on it. I got voltage to the one side of the solenoid. Nothing to the other. 
Now this started wiggling as soon as I was hitting the, like it wanted to work. And we do know that when the switch is on, that it gets spark. When the switch is off, it doesn't spark. So we're gonna leave it to the on position for now. It'll take some time to throw frisbee with my dog. You ready, buddy? What's that? Why wouldn't I? See how my dog's on it. You ready? Here we go. Here we go. There you go, buddy. Hey. Nice job. Nice job. Bring it here. Good boy. Good boy. Yes, yes. Good boy. Wait, wait, wait. That's Oliver. There you go. It's nice when the wind's not blowing 100 miles an hour. He doesn't do weird things to the Frisbee. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. What? Hey, bring it here. Bring it here. There you go. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. Let's go, buddy. There you go. So good. Yeah, so good. Good boy. <laughs> it's like nothing with no wind, ain't it? Pretty predictable. Pretty predictable. Yes, sirree. There you go. Look at you bringing it right back to me. Look at you bringing it right back to me. Yeah, you ready? What happened there? What happened there, buddy? You just watched it. Come here. Come here. Yeah, you just watched it. What was that all about, huh? What was that all about, huh? Oh, yeah, that's a good boy. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, he just waited on that one, didn't you, buddy? Good boy. Are you ready for a long one? Are you ready for a long one? Huh? Ready for a long one? Here we go. Nice. <laughs> four feet off the ground, even. Not height, but four legs. Good boy. Are we done? The tired? Are you tired? What's up with that? Like you want the pink one now or what? Yeah? Yeah? Tell me ah. about it. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> What's the deal with that? Same spot. <laughs> Goofball. I guess we're done, huh? Found them. Just want a short one? It's always fun to play with the dog, but now we got to get back to checking this thing over. So the starter switch does not work. And it doesn't even trip the solenoid. Solenoid, um, when you hit it, you should hear a click. Even if you got a bad solenoid, it may not engage the uh, starter. So I'm going to show you how to check the solenoid real quick. Right now I have an alligator clip on each end of a wire going from the battery it doesn't matter which way you go, it doesn't matter. It's just it's just making connection, right? But I've got my, uh, you know, this little trigger starter. Hear that? So I've got the trigger starter going between the negative and the other side of the post. This is a four post uh, starter solenoid. So what you want to do to see if there's any juice passing through on you 
as I take my little multimeter here, did I put this together upside? Nope. So I've got it so it makes a, you hear that? We'll put that on either side of the terminal. So if it makes contact, it'll go beep. Hear that? No beep. That means the power is not going through from one side of the solenoid to the other. Or the power can't go through. If it, if it doesn't make continuity, it's not going to go through. So just for fun, let's check a brand new one. Now I've got a brand new one here. We'll take, take the same alligator clip and clip onto the end of this. Like I said, it doesn't matter which one. We'll clip the other end of my starter. Onto the other one. So we're all good there, right? Now I'll touch this on either side. We got nothing. Can you hear that? When I squeeze the trigger and it makes a connection, So we know this star solenoid is good. And there again, I just hooked one battery terminal to here, the other battery terminal to here. And, but I had my switch in between. Now, if you don't have a trigger like this, I'm gonna show you the other way you can do it. Just a little more, it takes a, just say it takes a few more hands to do that. You can hook an alligator clip up to, get it on there, to one end. You have your two alligator clips. Alligator clips just make it easier for you. Oh, don't touch them together like I just did. <laughs> Woo wee! Fire and ice, right? I don't know if you guys saw that, but you can do it that way too. I just the trigger makes it easier because you gotta you gotta try to touch. In this instance, you'd have to do it like this. You gotta hold. Let's just say these two against this and then touch it. So that's all, that's all it takes to check it. I'm not really checking for how much voltage is passing through there. Just the fact that I hear it clicking and it makes connection. That's all I care about at the moment. So now we know that this starter solenoid is bad, but the key switch isn't working. So we got a yellow. And uh, we got two yellows here running through here. Let's see if we can get this around so we can see it. Dun, dun, dun. So we got to do some tracing as to what's going on here. So we determined the solenoid does activate and does go clickety click, but it's not letting stuff pack, pass through. But I didn't understand why it wasn't clicking with the ignition switch. So I've traced some of these wires back here and one of the yellow wires goes to one with the yellow with the orange stripe here goes to the switch. The other one sneaks around and goes over here and I'm like, where is it going to? And it goes to this little switch right here. And what that is is the doesn't let you start it when it's in when it's in gear. So that disables it, that enables it. Now I should have clickety click going on. So when I hit the ignition switch here, which I have in my hand, boom, that's working every time. So we're going to go ahead and replace this solenoid, and then we should have, a, you know, be able to engage the starter. And we're going to go ahead and undo the negative battery terminal. Out the battery or the battery however you pronounce it I know how I pronounce it it's however you want to pronounce it and we'll uh, proceed with getting this pulled out of here and get the new one in all right as you saw what I did here is I put all the wires back on but when I pulled it out I actually sprayed some soapy water just a couple sprays in there to let this slide back into the rubber nice and easy I pulled these two screws out so I can move this arm out of the way a little bit so I can get at that nut that's right below there 
to back off the clamp to be able to slide this out and put it back in. Now we got all these tightened back down securely. I put the battery positive battery terminal back on. Let's see if it works. Hey, look at there. Now the good news is we got our we got our starter situation figured out. All complete. Now off camera, I'll tell you what I did is I was taking a, another heavy cable off the battery on the positive side and I was touching it over here to engage the starter and I was putting some raw fuel with one of these squirt bottles. These are, all, these are always nice to have to put uh, fuel in and you can just squirt it right in there and you know make it do starter things. And I put two stroke in there, two stroke fuel only. Now people are using carb cleaner, they're using brake clean, they're using, you know, stuff they shouldn't use. Let's just put it that way to start stuff. On a two stroke, only use two strokes mix. And quite frankly, if you're starting an old car or something that you haven't started for a while, use two stroke mix, 40 to 1, 51. It helps lubricate things instead of drying it out because that's exactly what it will do when you try to uh, start a vehicle with brake cleaner, it washes down the cylinder. It doesn't do it any favors. So I'm just saying, don't do it. Now, now that we got that all figured out, we're gonna disconnect the battery cables once again. And uh, what I did determine, the reason I was telling you about the, about the how I started it, is I determined after squirting stuff down through here and putting plenty of, uh, you know, pumping up the primer bulb and everything that the carburetor isn't carburating. It's just, uh, it's not working. So what we're going to do now is pull the starter off. Okay, we got the starter off here. I'm going to show you what it, the things you take off to get this starter off here. You got to pull this starter solenoid off. And I also took this clamps off here that control this little arm right there. That allows you enough room and wiggle room to get things out, basically so you can get to this bolt so you can get the starter solenoid out. And then all it is is one bolt there, there's another bolt, where to go? Right down here, and there's one on the front that goes on this stud. You take that loose, and you got the starter free. Once you got the starter free, it allows you access to this nut right here. It goes right there and you as you pull this out you got also the fuel line hose comes in from the bottom i also took this choke plate loose that i put bolts on earlier so the carburetor is now free there's one wire one connection here and that's it for the solenoid and i'll find out here in a little bit we're going to learn together but i think this switch here goes in and i didn't get a chance to try that before i unhooked everything but i think that goes in which will basically electronically electrically does that so this pulls that solenoid in here and will choke it temporarily while you're starting it then when you let go or you also have the manual version that's on the front here that's hooked to this plate so this has a couple of options well it's time to get over to the bench and see what's wrong with the carburetor while we're not getting any fuel now at this point of the program Because like most two strokes that's been sitting for a while, things have probably gotten gummed up. There's really nothing to take a picture of on this side. But I like to take a picture of this here. Just for the simple reason. I like to, it might be a day or two before I get back to some of this stuff. And I, this is a better memory than what I've got going on in my head. I'll tell you that right now. So you kind of get an idea of what's going on. So we got our pictures taken. And one thing I like to check with this is to see where was it at when it was last running? Where did it, so I got this point straight up and down. So there's a half, one, just shy of one and a half turns out. That'll give us an indicator. Usually one and a half is a good starting point. Once you have it running, that's when you start doing some more stuff. That's a long winded sucker. I also get this little rubber gasket out. We're going to replace that too. 
I've got a little metal tray here that we can put all of our parts in. I do have a brand new carb kit. So when we start putting it back together, now I took and blew in the bottom of this thing. You can't get any air through the fuel line. If you can't get air in there, you sure as heck ain't gonna get any gas through there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this bottom plate off. And we'll see what's going on here. Now I said bottom plate, before you guys start typing in words, it's a bowl, I get it. Now what's hooked to the bowl here is also this solenoid here, which means that this has got to come apart, which means I got to maybe unthread this a little bit. Just to disassemble. That's why I take pictures of it so I can see how all this goes back together because I'm, I'm touching some stuff with some springs on it. This is going to get ugly before it gets better for sure. You know, now that I think about it, why don't I just do this? I'm going to leave this on here. Let's re-tighten that back up. Let's just go ahead and pull the bowl screws because then I'll be able to take this piece and kind of wiggle it out of there and get it out of the way. Then I might take it off later if I want to soak the bowl. Typically the bowl, you know, you can do a little soaking. You can use, use a little carb cleaner spray. We'll just see what's in there first. A couple of love taps and that will hopefully live straight off of there maybe. Ooh. We got it manipulated off of there. Here's what I was talking about. You can take this and just do like that. Now, I'm seeing some really heavy oil in there right now. Well, that heavy oil is left over. Uh, boy, oh yeah, that's some, definitely some seriously spoiled gas. Here's another little bit of a problem here. Check that gasket out. So that's right there, comes up through here. That was half blocked. When I pull this off there, look at that. That was half blocked off from the word go. So there's a problem. You're only going to get half as much fuel as you want in there. We're going to pull the old float pin out. Take the float out. Good news is, is it's uh, free of gas. Float needle. Then we'll go ahead and pull this seat out. Needle seat. Don't forget this little gasket here. Don't forget to put one in too. Oh yeah, that's tight. Just a lot of thick, oily stuff everywhere. It's gonna be nice to run this through the carb cleaner for sure. I can leave all this stuff on the outside here. This is just the screw that holds the butterfly in place. Pretty simple carburetor overall, not a lot of adjustments. So we can just put that in the old soaker like that. And uh, what do I want to do with this? Now here I do want to check the jet down here. There again, we expected things to be plugged. Not a little tiny jet down in here. And you should be able to see light through here. And I can see a little bit of light through there, but it's it's about half the size it should be. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that jet out. Or not. Goodness, that's tight. Well, we'll just soak this part of the carburetor just like this. I'm going to leave this solenoid in place. Maybe not. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. I 
Now this just has a little plastic pin here I can pull, it looks like. And free that assembly. That's cool. We'll set that aside so we can soak all this stuff and make it all nice and clean again. Now you ask yourself, Michael, what do you soak your stuff in? I use some Berryman's. This stuff right here works really good. Now, I am going to get me an ultrasonic cleaner before anybody mentions it uh, in the comments. But you can mention it. Don't be afraid to leave comments. This is a good time for you to stop, leave a comment, and, uh, you know, subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel. All right, we're just going to soak this right in here. I'll dip that right straight down in there like that. Then I'll stick this whole thing right in there like that. Boom. I like to let this soak overnight. You only need to soak it for two or three hours. This one overnight is not going to hurt a thing. And we'll be ready to put it back together in the morning. Okay, everybody. I'm trying to going to get you to get you good. Going to going to get you going to get you a good shot here. That's what I'm talking about. Here's the here's the main jet. Look at the the size of the hole you can see through there now is huge. We've got that completely cleaned out. The other thing you can see through the carburetor bowl through here, I'm going to show you that this was completely plugged. Whoa. Let's see if I can get this. See where you guys, you guys can see that through there now. See that's wide open now. That thing was 100% plugged. And we got her all cleared out now. We're ready to go back together. Pretty simple operation to go back together. We're going to go ahead and crack this new packet open and see how it matches up with the uh, original parts. I believe this. I'll leave the link in the description below if I think about it. If I forget about it and you need it, uh, just leave a message. Say, hey, you forgot to put the, the link below. Now I'm just going to dump the whole contents out here on the table. We can look through it. Now well, we got our new seat needle here. That's one of the first things I like to see if it fits because I've had horrible luck. If you buy anything that's not OMC or Johnson or Evinrude or you know original equipment stuff, when you go to put this seat in here, it just doesn't. Uh, thread in properly Let's just see if this one works. It's a beautiful looking piece shiny Yeah, just like that The thread does not match Why can somebody give me a reason why these threads just absolutely are terrible at matching the OMC stuff junk in my opinion Well, there's nothing wrong with the old seat we're just going to clean it up a little bit and stick it back in. But I have this happen so many times. I think this is Sierra brand and they're just frustrates the crap out of me. All right, we got the needle seat in there. We've got the needle in there. We've got the float set. If you look at it, I'm going to try to get you lined up here as best I can. But the bottom of the float is parallel to the bottom of here. That's, that's about where you want it to set right there. That's usually a good spot for it. The other thing I'm going to test fit, don't forget about this little seal right here that goes around this tube. That goes down and seals around this guy right here. And you can use the bowl if you want. Just to push it down. That should just go right down there and you'll see it kind of bottom out and rock a little bit like that but that's because you don't have this gasket on now what i'm gonna look at for this gasket look for is this gasket here had some imprinting around the where was it yeah you can see where it's half cutting off the the hole for where the fuel comes through which that's not any good i just kind of loosely place this one on here and all the holes line up and that hole is not half blocked 
at all. It's actually lined up really good right there. So I think we'll be able to live with that. I'm going to go ahead and stick this back on. Carefully. Then I'll loosely start each of these screws in. You start them in by hand, that lets that gasket line itself up. I get the screws just to where they start to, let's just show you here, just get about that far down, right about there, same way there. And just give them all just a little bit of, a little bit of tweak there, just don't get crazy. Just work them down, you're trying to just ease that, ease that down onto that rubber gasket. If you tighten one too much and the other, this thing could scoot the gasket around on you a little bit. That's why I like to just ease it on down. And you'll feel when it's time to stop. Maybe you won't. That's good and tight there. That's going to seal up. Just like it should. Alright. That's pretty good. Now... I kind of roll it back and forth. I can hear that float working. Let's do a little quick test. And I've just got a piece of extra fuel line here. I'm going to hook up to the bottom, see if I can get it started. Just over that first barb that's sealed off. I can push air through there. No air. Air. So we know the float's doing, you know, it's floating and seating. Now that we've got that back on, we've got a brand new little gasket here for this guy. So basically we just press that in and this thing threads its way through it. And it should pick up on your threads down below. Be careful not to cross thread anything. That's going to make it turn pretty tight compared to the old one. Which is fine because it helps stay there then, right? Wherever your setting is. So there, we're in there good now. Real good. There's bottomed out. Half, one, one and a half turns out. That's where we'll start. Now we gotta put this side of the carburetor back together. Or this goes up and hooks up to the top. But then this had some this there are some there's some things here. We got a rod here that came just became disconnected and where did it go? All that fun stuff. Time to look at the pictures. Trying to remember how this thing went back on. It looks like it was a lot like that right there. And then this arm came through like this. Take this back off now. Well, now that we got that back together right, now I can put this on. Oh no, what? <laughs> Unbelievable. This is supposed to be on the other side. I'm just gonna pull this cotter pin out this time. Mainly because I don't wanna screw that on and off again. All 
All right, we got the carburetor all back together. Now what I've done here is I've ground out the carburetor and I put my positive terminal here on the battery and I've got my little lone wolf starter, so to speak, remote starter switch. And I'm just testing. As soon as you put juice to it, it's magnetized it and pulls this in, which is working your choke. So all that seems to be working pretty good. Just a nice thing to test before you put it back on. Not that it's hard to get at once you got it installed. Now we're ready to install our carburetor. Now this is going to be kind of strange for you guys to see, but I'm going to do it anyway. I want to make sure there's fuel coming through this line. In order not to make a huge mess, I'm going to put a line inside it so I can catch the fuel. I got my fuel tank hooked up and my primer bulb. I'm just going to squeeze the primer bulb. There, it looks like plenty of fuel can pass through the pump and through the line. I'm just giving her every pump. I'm getting a lot of juice out of here, so that's good. We're just flushing some good, clean fuel through here. So this way I know that fuel will get to the carburetor. Well, that seems to be okay. That's good news. Now I can feel pretty comfortable about putting this carburetor back on. I'm going to probably spill a little bit here. Not bad. Get this hose stuck back on. I'll get a zip tie back onto that. Alrighty, we've got the battery hooked back up. That's just what I thought when you push this in. That's your choke. Let's see if the starter still works. Why am I dead on the starter part? What did I forget to hook back up? What the heck? Oh, <laughs> gotta have it in neutral. All right, we just gotta hook this throttle linkage back up here. Well, I think we're ready to test the bad boy now. We got a uh, way to get fuel to it once again. We'll see if the fuel pump's actually working. All right, we got her in the tank. The moment of truth. So I'm gonna try it without choke at first. See what it does. I wanted to go. I want to do the electric choke here. Well, she's pumping water like crazy.
so far. Just sits there and purrs. Wow. You grab this wrong, and it will, it will hit you, guaranteed. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the air box back on because everything seems to be working like it should, and just see how much quieter the intake is. Part of me says put a new water pump in it, but that thing's pumping like a champion. Now, could it go out at any time? 
Maybe. But sometimes this a little bit older rubber is better than some of this new rubber made, depending on where you get it from. We did a little little wiring work here I shortened up these ends this thing's plenty long here anyway this is still about four four and a half feet long at least but I crimped some new ends on it that have a 5 16 hole versus a half inch hole which the other ones had in it uh, plus heat shrinked with the the good heat shrink it's got the goo in it to keep moisture out I also wrap this in this I use this rubber tape it's a rubber, you pull it out and it stretches out and you're, it's rubbery and uh, sticks to itself. Better than electrical tape that's relying on adhesive. This just vulcanizes itself together. So I've got this all neatened up, looking pretty good. Also, did a little bit of wire management through this area here, up and over here, around through here, down a little bit there, and all the way around. So all my wires are now covered and, you know, it just looks a lot better less likely that some of your wires are going to get jacked up by something plus if mice get in there i guess it gives them another layer to chew through the rotten bastards all right there it is next time you see it we'll be putting it into water i hope we'll see how this bad boy starts up That's a quiet machine there. This thing runs nice. Quiet, smooth, baby. had a bunch of water come in when I let off the throttle and went whoosh. It's all right. It's all right. Operator error. are out in the water to watch. The water gators. All right. 
event, which you guys just witnessed here, is launching the 35 horse long shaft Heaven Road. trimmed it up one notch thinking that might be the trick but it might not be the trick I'm like where's the kill switch I forgot I did pull this choke out this has the electric choke if you like already push it in yeah It actually manually does a choke and gives it a little throttle. Oh, mercy. Pops right off, baby. It's the beast. We're back in the shop. I'd love to tell you that I was going to do the outro with that Evan Rood sitting right here on the stand in front of me. But uh, while I was out on the lake, I was putting the outboards that I was testing that day on Facebook Marketplace with some live video. And lo and behold, before I could get that done, it was sold. Uh, about four hours later, it was sold. And the guy came and picked it up. He was planning on putting it on a boat today and going catfishing. So the Everrude is moved on down the road uh, to its new owner. And I hope they really enjoy it or he really enjoys it. It's a man, it's a good runner. I really like that electric start. Just a, a thing popped off so easy. Uh, just like most motors do when they're warmed up. But this one started up 
I'd call a relatively easy cold. That electric choke on there, I pretty, I pretty much dig that because it does two things when you push the button in. It choked it, plus it also gave it a little more throttle. And I think that's what I have to figure out on this uh, 20 horse, 25 horse that I was running. Uh, I think I just gotta make sure I give it a little more twist on the grip, maybe to, to the wide open stop. You know, when it's in neutral, it only goes so far and give it a couple yanks and I bet it pops off a little easier that way. Anyway, any, any outboard you get, any two stroke especially, electric start not so much, but because uh, you got a lot of forgiveness there with it just holding the electric start until it just does something, right? Pull starts, they're, you know, getting a little more of a sequence of I do this and I do this, I pull it once and then I do this and I pull it again, it fires every time. Once you figure some stuff out like that, then they become way more enjoyable for sure. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We had a great day on the lake. Uh, we tested the a 25 horse that you probably saw last week. Uh, tested that one out, ran it in really good, put about 20, a little over 20 miles on it. Uh, performed flawlessly, ran good. We tried multiple props on it, did some prop testing there just for fun. And then we came back, took the boat out of the water and put the, this boat, this uh, Evan Root in the water on the, on the good enough, raised the jack plate up because it's a long shaft and took it for another 18 plus miles with a run in on it to see how it ran. And it ran well, very well. I mean, it was, there again, I won't sell them unless I feel like they're, you know, I don't want somebody else to get an outboard and have problems with it. That's not my goal. My goal is to give them the best product that I can give them. And don't get me wrong, I don't sell a whole bunch of, I got a whole bunch of outboards as I work on them and they turn out to be worthy, I will sell them. But if they turn out to be kind of, still got some questions on it, I won't sell it. But uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, I had a great day on the lake. It was a long day uh, overall by the time I got done with everything. And that was on a Saturday. On Sunday, which is today, uh, I'm a little beat. But I'm back out here. We're getting ready to take the carburetor off another one. And then... Uh, I'm going to go out there and work on a big old inline six next this afternoon once I get the carb work done on this one. So stay tuned. Plenty of content to come. We got some inline sixes. We got some inline fours. We got, I got outboards. I got outboards aplenty that we'll be working on. Try to keep you folks entertained. I hope you enjoy it. I appreciate all your comments. Don't be afraid to leave comments below. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, give me some feedback. I uh, love the tips. A lot of you guys have got some really great tips on some different things that I'm doing wrong, and I appreciate hearing about it. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Uh, I'm learning every day. I'm messing around with this stuff. Uh, I, I kind of pride myself on being a quick learn on a lot of things, uh, and every time I work on another outboard, I seem to pick up a little more information and just makes me a little more knowledgeable in the outboard world. Uh, a lot of you guys are asking me a lot of questions. I try to answer as many comments as I can. Uh, my channel is not so huge that I can't read every comment, and I usually read most all the comments. Uh, some of them, uh, usually, at the very least, I'll tell you to thank for watch, thanks for watching. Uh, just, uh, you know, just to let you know, I see your comments. So keep them coming. Keep the thumbs up coming. Keep the viewership coming. Don't forget to you know, share with friends and family and stuff. I get a lot of shares every week, which is awesome. A channel just cracked 19,000 subscribers about a week ago and uh that's pretty cool uh it's exciting i, I never would have guessed that this many people would be interested in seeing what i do which is just it's very humbling and uh gives me chills just to say that i'm just tell you that right now it's uh it's amazing Oh, didn't think that would get to me like that. <laughs> I'm a real person just like everybody else. So thank you folks for watching. Get out there and have some fun. Remember, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And we'll see you in the next video. I ain't kidding you. I got the best viewership and the viewers in the world. And uh, let's keep it going. Let's, let's get another 1,000. Let's get up to 20,000 subscribers. Let's just, I don't know, let's see where this thing goes. I'm excited uh, to... To have you folks as my audience and, and to be able to do this as a hobby is just, 
it's amazing and yes the links below you know give me a little feed give me a little money back from amazon you know it's not much but it's something making a little money on youtube which helps me afford to keep doing this for you guys uh would i love to do this as a full-time job you bet this would be awesome it'd be dreamy but uh we're not there yet someday but i'm as long as i'm alive and breathing i'm gonna keep working on these things this is one of the hobbies i've had that has that i enjoy both ends of it i enjoy the working on them and being in my shop and working on them and just the peace and tranquility that brings and then uh also taking them out in the water and then occasionally throwing a rod and a reel in the water and see if I can catch a few fish. Uh, it's just, just enjoyable as I'll get out. And uh, plus keeping some four wheelers running for my grandkids when they come over so they can ride them and enjoy the backyard marina just like we do. We'll see you on the next video. I'll say it again. If it ain't broke, fix it till it is. Much love to everybody out there.